Hare Krishna. So welcome all of you for this evening's Bhagavad Gita class. Now today we are discussing from the fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. We have completed the first four chapters. Today we have come to the fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So here it is little technical to understand these chapters, first two, three, four, five. After that, from the seventh chapter onwards, you will get lot of clarity and you will get much better ideas of uh, uh, what Krishna is trying to say. But I will try to explain this in uh, with an example. Okay. <clears throat> Suppose I am a farmer, I am an agriculturist. I have a patch of land and I produce food. And if I produce food and produce not the modern farming where we produce tobacco, rubber, this is not considered as agriculture in the Vedic system. Vedic point of view, agriculture is meant for producing food grains and it's, it requires for people to subsist, you know, to uh, live, that is the idea of the farming. Now suppose I am a farmer, I am producing, I have land and if I do my farming in very exploiting manner, I don't consider nature, I don't consider the uh, soils good health, I don't, I exploit the nature and uh, uh, I am very rude to the nature as well as the animals around me while I am working and then I am called uh, sinful man. Hmm? Now I will go and explain the different gradation of very sinful man. So doesn't uh, it as per scriptures is the lowest being. It's very sinful and for the sins which I committed I have to suffer either by the law of the land or law of God. Sometimes someone may escape from the law of this country or land, but from the God's law, nobody can escape. So there will be justice. So then I am called sinful man. <clears throat> now I improve myself and I don't exploit the nature or exploit the animals. I grow food legally, nicely, without hurting anybody. And uh, whatever I produce, I enjoy. I make money, I inflate my bank balance and I enjoy myself. Then I am called Karmi. If you in the third chapter, there is one section called Karma Kanda to Karma Yoga. Okay. Then I am called Karma Kanda. This is called, I am nothing to do with the God, I am very honest worker. I don't cheat anybody, I honestly work, I do sincerely. but. Profit comes, I only keep myself, I don't give to anybody else, including God, well, including the poor people. Then I call karmi, still I have nothing to do with the uh, spirituality. Sometimes people tend to think, if I am honest and sincere, I am doing my duty, that is called karma yoga. So this is the misconception. Just by becoming honest and sincere, does not make you karma yogi. You are still a karmi because yoga comes only when you connect to God. So now I am doing everything but I am enjoying myself. Now for all that I have done knowingly and unknowingly, I would have committed some sinful activities. I also would have some pious activity. I have done some dhana dharma, some poor people I have helped. Donated sometimes something to temple. Then for the purpose which I committed, I have to suffer. And the punya which I have accumulated, I will enjoy. That is the next destination for me as a karmi. Now from the sinful man to I became karmi. Now further I refine myself. Where, again now as a farmer, I honestly, sincerely produce food, food grains. And the majority of it, the majority of my production, 
accept what is required for me to lead a simple life roti kapda makala clothing shelter and a food so that much i will keep to myself and myself and my family but majority of it i use it in the service of god service of god means giving to temple the temple which helps the people there is a connection that the the only karma yoga it becomes if i directly give it to poor it becomes charity if i give it to people through krishna then it becomes bhakti devotional service because the, the temple gives people get awe and reverence to god krishna that is why in our culture if you know during sankranti the sugi habba and the sankranti what they do they all that cultivated they give it to temple and the temple then distributes to people and sometimes people will have some reserves at the time of famine or drought temple supports the people around so this is the natural vedic culture in the temple becomes the center of knowledge center of the support for the human beings and center for even for justice so that is how the civilization grew around the temples so now karma as a karma yogi yogi means i have to live simple life because if i am thinking i enjoy more and more materially then where is the question that i get detached to this material world and get attachment to god that is not possible yogi if i have to become yogi i have to lead a simple life as much as i need it only i should take so the karma yogi keeps after working honestly as much as required for himself rest he distributes in charity so proper way of doing charity then i become karma yogi so now for a sinful man karmi i became karma yogi okay the next step is that how i become karma yogi so now today's chapter is more describes the next step okay and the third chapter describes the this step karma yogi becoming karma yogi that is why third chapter talks a lot about sense control you should control your senses because unless we control our senses we cannot lead a simple life greed will develop in us that is why arjuna asks a question in the third chapter bala divan yojita something force inside me is making me to do something which i don't want to do how to control that arjuna asks this question because krishna told to become karma yogi or to control your senses so now fifth chapter is even more elevated understanding of yoga in the karma yoga itself that is why it is said karma yoga action in krishna consciousness this chapter <clears throat> now you see i come to the next level of karma i am still karma yogi but i am next level of karma yogi how is that now i am a farmer again okay i have produced fruit grains all that i produced 100% i give it to god then receive from the god as a prasadam whatever is given to me so i am been allocated i go and beg the lord please give me something so god will give you something what is needed for you to sustain so depending on god's mercy i am a farmer and farmer will naturally have an inclination to do farming that is farming is also a one of the vedic occupation that's why i took this example i cannot take the example of engineer because engineer or lawyer uh, does not suit into the vedic uh, uh, deep gradation of uh, no occupation which is told by vedas if you strictly say the way, as per the vedic explanation engineer is a shudra because he is working for somebody working for some targets of somebody else like a donkey he works very hard for what not for himself for somebody else so there there uh, that class is called as per the vedic understanding they are called shudras now it may appear very harsh but this is a reality is a mindset of a person i am working for somebody and not for myself uh, the example is given like a donkey donkey carries so much of clothes on its back not even a single piece of cloth is belongs to donkey for what purpose donkey is carrying because at the end of the day the owner will give the donkey little grass to eat 
the grass is available freely which the donkey is working very hard for that so that is why i took the example of the farmer it comes under one of the vedic uh, uh, occupation so sinful farmer i became karmi a honest farmer from there i became karma yogi by keeping only myself what is necessary, barely, barely needed for me the karma yogi i became advanced karma yogi where i gave everything to god krishna and whatever krishna gave me back i received this means i been maintained by temple i give to temple and temple maintains me what is needed now basically i i should be so renounced that i give everything to krishna if one day the temple says i i don't we don't have money and will not give you i should still depend on god and survive that's why it's called elevated karma yogi the higher level advanced karma yogi now till now the karma yogi has gone from the sinful man karmi karma yogi advanced karma yogi now i will explain what is then bhakti yoga okay. so that is in the 12th chapter of bhagavad gita we will come to that so where the whatever patch of land i have 10 acres or 40 acres or 30 acres whatever patch of land i have i donate that to the temple then i as temple i am taking because temple refers to god okay it's basically for god i am giving it to god's service whoever is doing god's service right? god service in the form of distributing prasadam preaching krishna consciousness distributing the knowledge of bhagavad gita these are called god's service it is considered to be more than the mere social service why is it so because social service is already included in god's service definitely uh, in the god service anybody does god service naturally whole society will support meaning the temple can open even hospital and serve the patients and the patients come to hospital uh, the temple run hospital may give them prasadam instead of giving some food which is not offered to god so in offer to god food is given not only he cures physically he also cures spiritually also he advances so everything has to be connected to god so now karma advanced to karma yogi i want to become bhakti yogi advanced bhakti yogi how to become for that i donate all my land what i have to krishna krishna service then after donating <clears throat> i see what is needed in krishna service now as a farmer i have an inclination to do farming you know generally the farmers from the village they like to be farm keep doing farm we ask them to come to city in two days they can stay after that they say i want to go back i have to look after my cows i have to look after my land they always have so much of intense feeling for their land and growing now as i have some inclination towards as a farmer to farm but i have donated the land to the temple the temple says that now there is no necessity to farm farming we will do through different system now krishna service what is needed is that you should go and distribute food to poor people you should cook food and offer to krishna and distribute that to poor people that is a service which krishna has given to me now though my inclination is to do farming i give up my tendency of a farmer give up my liking and dislikings renounce that accept the liking and disliking of krishna and take that as a seva that is the advanced bhakti yoga that's a bhakti yoga is superior to all other that's a this karma name is attached from the karma karma yoga advanced karma karma yoga when it comes there is some space for you to have your inclination alive in the service to lord as a farmer i have inclination to do farming so that inclination is kept alive so then it is advanced karma yogi therefore so you should know now i will explain very important point sometimes people point out that shila prabhupad when he translated bhagavad gita in the iskons bhagavad gita yoga called sometimes uh, bhakti yoga karma yoga is called bhakti yoga sometimes like this people have some comments 
on Srila Prabhupada's translation of Bhagavad Gita, Iskand's translation. Now, in reality, advanced karma yoga also can be called as bhakti yoga. It's a bhakti yoga because you're connected to God, isn't it? There's bhakti only. And even karma yoga also can be bhakti yoga. Ultimately, everything is for God. Yoga means bhakti yoga only. You're connecting with the God with the love and affection to God. Therefore, appropriately, time to time, acharyas, when they translate, when they say karma yoga to bhakti yoga, yoga they translate as a bhakti yoga, we should understand that is the mood which Krishna is explaining, which acharyas are giving us the meaning. Because it's very slight difference. Karma yoga to advanced karma yoga to bhakti yoga, very slight difference is there. So, this is what actually Krishna consciousness means. Like we all, so we have joined temple as a full-time dedicated missionary. We might had sometimes some likes and dislikes. One is renouncing everything. Second is giving up certain likes and dislikes of us. And do what is needed in the service of Guru and Krishna. That becomes actually advanced bhakti. That's a practical example. The devotees, a full-time dedicated devotees in the temple. Uh, there are so many in our temple in, uh, in Bangalore and many cooks in our temple who cook for the Lord are engineers. Now in their life they would have never thought they would have only cook for the Lord. Okay, their whole service is cooking for the Lord. They would have never thought cooking for the Lord will be my service. When they joining as a full time dedicated missionary to the temple also they would have not thought they will become cooks in the temple. Now they have joined with the complete surrenderance to God that you tell me what is needed in your service. Then whatever has come under the direction of Guru and Krishna, they accept it happily and do their service. This is called advanced bhakti yoga. This is what Srila Prabhupada wants to offer to all of us at different levels. So this is how we understand what are different levels, which level am I in devotional service. When I cross all these things, my liking, disliking, all I keep aside, I only think that Guru and Krishna service, then actually a person can feel the uh, real prema, the love for God. Then only when we chant, when we see the Lord, the tears will come from the eyes. When we chant the holy name of Krishna, there will be you know, uh, the hair standing on the end, there is an experience of ecstasy in devotional service can be seen when person advances like this. Now this advancement as Bhagavad Gita explains, it is at different people, different level. Okay. So uh, this is a technical point which I explained. Now today we are understanding advanced karma yoga, which is karma yoga in action in Krishna consciousness. So let us start this. <coughs> Please repeat after me. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Arjuna Uvacha Sanyasam Karmanam Krishna Punar Yogam Chasham Sasi Yachreya Eta Yorekam Tanmi Bruhi Sunishitam Shri Bhagavan Vacha Sanyasa Karma Yogascha Nishreya Sakara Ubho Tayo Hutu Karma Sanyasa 
कर्म योगो विशेष्य अर्जुन सैट ओ कृष्ण फर्स्ट ऑफ आल यू आस् मी टू रिनाउंस द वर्क एंड देन अगेन यू रेकमेंड वर्क विद डिवोशन Now, will you kindly tell me, definitely, which of two is more beneficial? So, why Arjuna is going through this confusion? Because karma yoga, advanced karma yoga, when he is going, he has to renounce his. He should not be Arjuna should not be attached to fighting. Though he is a Kshatriya, he should be renounce. He should not be interested. Then, once he renounces, Krishna awards a duty to Arjuna. Now, I tell you to fight. so there is a difference just like i said you have you are produced food given to krishna then you take back what you needed uh, krishna gives me back what i needed for my survival isn't it now arjuna renounces he has no attachment for fighting but he is doing as the direction of krishna that is called working devotion so then that is why arjuna is getting confused arjuna is asking question arjuna is not confused but we are confused arjuna is you know help, helping us to understand so you asked me to renounce the work and again you recommended work with devotion now will you kindly tell me definitely which of the two is more beneficial for me then krishna says so first section arjuna's question 2 to 6 is krishna answering this questions okay then uh, fourth section is performing nishkama karma yoga or advanced i i mean it is advanced karma yoga and that frees one from bondage and the liberation by focusing on supreme <clears throat> so arjuna asks this question which is superior uh, should i give up my action work uh, renounce everything sanyasa in karma or should i renounce the work or should i be in the position of renounced when i am doing the work you are getting there is a difference in this renouncing the work second is being in the consciousness of renounced while doing the work i am not attached to the work so what is this so krishna asks this question <clears throat> krishna answers this So Krishna says in this, the Lord bless Lord said, the renunciation of work and work in devotion are both are good for liberation. Okay, both you can do. You can give up the work and go, or work with the devotion, take some service to God. That is called work with Krishna. But as the guru, working devotion service is better than renouncing the work, because renouncing this world also gives. You access to spiritual life. Like so many yogis, they renounce. They go to Himalayas, correct? So they renounce their work and go to Himalayas. What do they do? They meditate. That is also part. The both are good. That also helps you to get liberated. But the second one, you you are renounced. After renouncing, you take up some work in the service of Krishna. That is called devotional service. Now Krishna has ordained Arjuna to fight. there is a difference between arjuna wants to fight and enjoy the victory second is krishna is ordained arjuna to fight and he is doing as a duty as a service to krishna so krishna said second one is better for you then <clears throat> one who is neither hates nor desires the fruits of his activities is known to be always renounced So he need not to give up work and go away. You be in the consciousness of don't try to because the result is not for you. No, as a farmer, if I grow, if I get good produce, it is not for me. I am going to give it to God. So it is success and failure both. I only put my effort. I should reflect on myself. Have I put the sincere effort? Once I put sincere effort, the result is meant for God. So I give it to God. So <clears throat> neither hates nor desires the fruits of his activities. 
if every crop which i have grown everything is spoiled also i don't worry about it okay every nice crop comes also i don't get elated about it because i offer that to the lord because i know i do my duty hard work and after that is a krishna willing so krishna will do that it should get spoiled it is spoiled krishna wants the good crop as to come it has come so i don't worry such a person liberated from all dualities easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated o mighty all arjuna only the ignorant speak of karma yoga and devotional service as being different from jnana yoga or sankhya yoga meaning analytical study of material world those who are actually learned say that he who applies himself well to one of these paths achieves the results of both so whether you take the marga of sankhya or jnana or you take the marga of karma yoga or devotional service prabhupar uses the here word devotional service for the karma yoga because here it's offering to lord that is why sometimes it can be interchanged also hmm? i said that if i offer some produce uh, uh, to god then i said is i become karma yogi okay because i'm offering to god that is also can be called devotion isn't it just you you uh, light a lamp for god in your home that is also devotional service so devotional service has a very broad meaning so sometimes like this interchangeably they use karma yoga and devotional service one who knows the position reached by means of renunciation can also be attained by works of devotional service who therefore sees that the path of works and the path of renunciation are one sees things as they are <clears throat> the last verse of this unless one is engaged in devotional service of the lord mere renunciation of activity cannot make one happy the sage is purified by the works of devotion achieve the supreme without delay just only one see gives up his work this actually talks about <clears throat> immature giving of the work somebody is very inspired okay i'll give up all my renounce everything but i am very neophyte very beginner in my in my advancement of spiritual life i have so much desire okay and still i give up then it is immature giving up uh, the person cannot be happy by giving up like that he'll be always frustrated when will i get that he'll be keep thinking like this so therefore one should not renounce its, his work unless one feels so one has to feel to renounce his work one has to feel not artificially that is called advancement in devotional service so this are all explained for the vedic age let me very important point and tell you now don't reflect on yourself what job i am doing am i doing karma yoga don't reflect on this thing this is knowledge which krishna speaks actually these practices are very difficult to follow in the age of kali in the kali yuga why first of all vedic prescribed occupation is not existing in kali yuga number 1 number two scriptural knowledge is not available in kali yuga people speak of spirituality so many things your artificial intelligence also can give you gyan you go and ask ai that what is the goal of life it will give you what is the goal of life so kali yuga is filled with knowledge which is not necessarily necessarily from the scriptures so scriptural knowledge has lost and the vedic occupation is not available in the kali yuga vedic style of administration is not there in kali yuga kali yuga everybody living for the sense enjoyment let us accept this fact everybody is living for their own enjoyment in the kali yuga that is why shastra says kalayo shudra sambhavaha kali yuga everybody is born as shudra there is no possibility of the advanced civilization in kali yuga 
Therefore, for the age of Kali, there is another way of advancing in spirituality, which I will explain as we go in the further chapters. But in the chapter 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Krishna explains the core Vedic culture. In other ages, or if anybody is able to bring back the original Vedic culture in practice in the society, this is true. Therefore, my request is that, don't try to apply this in your life. Why am I doing Karma Yoga? And I gave this example to explain what is the difference between Karma Yoga and advanced Karma Yoga. But don't try to apply that in your life. So, in the Karma Yoga, it is, uh, first of all, Acharyas have explained to us, one should not renounce his work immaturely. That is also explained here. One has to do his work, one has to do his duty and practice certain principles of Kali in the Kali Yuga. What is practical? That is given. Scriptures only tell that. What is practical for Kali Yuga is given in the scriptures itself. So, you need to search anything new. So, we have to practice that. We will achieve that perfection. You may be a software engineer or you may be a uh, no, lawyer or you may be a, anybody, you may be a doctor. You can also achieve being a doctor, being an engineer, being a uh, no, uh, uh, housewife or giving any occupations you may be doing. Continue to do your occupations, still advance and get the highest realization in spirituality in Kali Yuga by another method. Because Lord knows this Kali Yuga or this is not possible. However, this I am explaining because this is there in Bhagavad Gita. These are the actual Vedic standards. So, <clears throat> so mere renunciation of activity should not make one happy. Okay, now, next section is that performing Nishkama. So, what is the second section Krishna said? Krishna said that you should do your work. Be renounced and do your work. That is better than giving up the work and going away. So now when we say work, it doesn't talk about you know, current work. Presently, work is not as per the Vedic occupation. It is for the Vedic culture. That type of work means somebody will do farming, somebody will do uh, administration, somebody is a Brahmana, somebody should do that is a categorization based on their ability and interest. So, so next section is performing Nishkama Karma Yoga that frees one from bondage. It has two subsections. It has characteristics of Yoga Yukta and the knowledge of the three doers. Let us go through that. <coughs> You can see the picture there. So, Sakama Karma Yoga or Karmi. Sakama Karma is also called Karmi. Myself, my family will eat the fruit. And the second person thinks that I will offer the fruit to Krishna. But both are apparently appears the same work. But consciousness is different. So, you don't give up your work. Growing plant is the work will continue. But the intention of growth will change. So, characteristics of Yoga Yukta, verse number 7 to 12. So, the advanced Karma Yogi, what is his consciousness? Who are you? I am the servant of God. What I said as a farmer, what is advanced karma yoga? Anybody remembers the example check? What I do? Go 100% to God and take whatever as a prasada of God. Yes, that is called advanced. What is karma, not advanced? Karma yogi, what I said? Ah. I take a simple life and all excess I give to Lord, I lead a simple life. So here about advanced karma yogi. Who are you? I am a servant of God. 
What work do you do? Work allotted by God. How do you do in the work? The work hard with sincerity, dedication and my best ability. What do you do with the results? I hand it over to God. This is advanced karma yuki. Okay. So still I have in this one attachment is there. That's called the karma yogi. What is the attachment? Very subtle it is. Uh, attachment to do farming. I don't want to cooking. I want to do farming. That's one subtle attachment is there in me. That's why still I am a karma yogi. Therefore, this this advanced karma yogi can also call as a devotee. Among the devotees also, we also may have some inclination. No. We will say, I can do this, I cannot do this. That is also a devotion service. But the highest form of devotion service is that don't have any likes and dislikes. So that may take time for one to advance to that level. <clears throat> one who works in devotion, who is pure soul, who controls his mind and senses, is dear to everyone. And everyone is dear to him. Though always working, such a man is never entangled. So for that one has to control his mind and senses. Work for the Supreme with the detachment. So you should work. Huh? You should eliminate that I did it. I have not done it. Who has done it? Krishna's energy. Krishna has done it. I only has put my part. I desired. Actually, what ability I have? I can only desire. All rest, everything should be given by God only. I can desire to travel. But will I be able to travel and reach my destination? That God has to depend on. So I can only desire. So I should not say I did it. Okay. You can say I intended to do it and Lord helped me to do it. That intention is what Lord is looking from all of us. He is not looking anything more. He is asking how whether you are intended to serve me, then all the facility to serve me I will give you. You have to take Lord's energy only to serve the Lord. The example is, when you don't go to Ganga, Ganga Mata, Ganga River, you take the water from the river and you give Argya back to the river. You know, sometimes when you, if you have gone to pilgrimage, some Pandijis will come and make you do some rituals. You take water from there and give Argya. So now, did Ganga get any help by you? By you giving some Argya water? No, that water also is supplied by Ganga Maya only. You have taken from her and you have given back to her. So it is her mercy that you are able to do something. What is that you have done in that is your desire to do it. That's all. You as Atman, you have a desire to do it. Rest everything is manifested by the mercy of God. So I did it, should not be there. We can't do anything on our own without God's sanction. There are many uncertainties in this world. So one should give up this false ego. Work as a faithful servant of God. Don't take any credit for the work done. Humbly surrender the reward to God. So that is the explanation here about advanced karma yogi understands all these things. If the good crop comes, he will not take credit. You see, I have grown so much. He said, I put my sincere effort, but after that, it is the Lord one who has given. I desire to give more for Krishna. So, that is why one can worship Krishna in whatever way he can. Somebody is very poor, does not have anything. He can also satisfy Krishna equally as a very rich man satisfy can satisfy Krishna. It is not that Krishna want everything in a golden plate. He needs some 56 items to be offered to him, grand temple to be built for him, uh, very piece of food to be offered to Krishna, Naivedyam. This is not the condition of Krishna. What did Krishna say? Patram Pushpam Phalam Thoyam Yome Bhaktya Prayachati. Even if you offer a 
फ्लावर फ्लावर इज अवेलेबल एनीवेयर ये लीफ है तुलसी लीफ अवेलेबल एनीवेयर डजंट कॉस्ट एनीथिंग और वाटर इट इज अवेलेबल फॉर एवरीबॉडी लिटिल दिस इज नॉट इट इज फॉर दोस हु आर एबल टू अफोर्ड ओनली दैट मच सपोज आई एम ए करोड़पति आई सो मच मनी बट आई ऑफर ओनली फ्लावर टू कृष्णा what is krishna's meaning is in my capacity what i can if i have so much money i should use that in krishna's service not that i take this excuse that krishna asked only water flower fruit krishna asked neither water flower fruit krishna neither asked golden pots he asked bhakti from you if you love somebody you will offer your best capacity isn't it your son or daughter is getting married so you will offer the best capacity if you are a poor you will offer a simple sari if you are very rich you will offer a sari which is 3 lakh rupees worth so recently there was a marriage of mukesh ambani's son see how much they have spent somebody may say is exaggerated it is also correct in one sense another sense is he has expressed he is a very big man He want to express his love. That's actually pouring out his love to his son. So it is the question of bhakti. If you don't have bhakti, then you will give excuse. Krishna told me water. I gave water. Then Krishna also is very expert, intelligent. He is not fool. If you try to fool Krishna, Krishna will fool you one day. So very easy for the Lord to understand. So Krishna is saying. योगे भक्त प्रयच्छति दोसो कम डिवोशन ही वॉन्ट्स ओनली डिवोशन एक्सापल इज कृष्ण कमिंग टू हस्तिपुर टू मेक ए क्रूस बिटवीन पांडवास एंड कौरवास एंड ट्राई टू स्टॉप द वॉर दुर्योधन हेड हैच ए प्लैन He made a elaborate arrangement for Krishna to, Krishna to stay. So many servants, varieties of food to be offered to the Lord. Oh, for him is not Lord Krishna. So he has made lot of arrangement for Krishna to stay. And the other one said, "I made all the arrangement. Krishna, please come." Krishna said, "I will come." Rather, Krishna chose to stay with Vidura. Vidura. Being a minister, he stayed very humbly. Like a Brahmana, he stayed very humbly and poor. Suddenly, when Krishna came, they didn't have anything in the home to offer to Krishna. They had a bunch of bananas. When he sat at the feet of Krishna and started peeling bananas and giving to the Lord, the ecstasy of love when Vidura was offering banana to the Lord by mistakenly. he was throwing banana and he was giving a peel to krishna and krishna was happily eating the peel of banana offered by vidura this is an instance from the mahabharata to know what krishna wants is your devotion the result of devotion is that you will offer your best you don't take excuse that i can only do this much to krishna okay. One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the supreme Lord, is unaffected by sinful action, as a lotus leaf untouched by the water. <coughs> This I explained already. Karma yoga and karma. If I do it with attachment, it leads to bondage. If I do it with, without attachment, it leads to moksha, the liberation. Karma yogi attains unadulterated peace, always very peaceful. and karmi i said karmi when did i say karmi as a farmer i do honestly sincerely but keep all the my produce to my enjoyment to let don't give to anybody so now those who do dishonestly cheat others they don't even come under any category they are called sinful they don't even come under any category they have to suffer so much as a result of their actions what they are doing okay so next section of this is knowledge of the three doers okay 
There are three doers you see there. One is called Jiva. Means we all are Jivas. Jiva means soul, Atman. Okay. Next is facilitator. One who facilitates us to do our action. Okay. Who facilitates us is Prakriti or Durga Devi. Prakriti. Who helps us to uh, complete or fulfill our desires. Then, who gives the final verdict that is sanctioner. So that is why it is a chaya. The Durga Devi is like a chaya of the uh, uh, is like a shadow of the Lord. So Lord has sanctioned. Durga Devi will fulfill those things. So the Prakriti my, in the 10th chapter it is explained there is no shloka, isn't it? Mayadhyakshena prakritihi suyate sa characharam. Maya adhyakshena prakritihi, Krishna said clearly. Under my direction, prakriti works. Prakriti does not work by its own. We think like that. It is working by its own. It is raining, not raining. No, no, no. Prakriti is working under the direction of God. Whether it is rain or not rain, huh? how much, uh, uh, no. Water should be there, how much water should not be there. It's under the direction of the Lord. Hmm? On what basis Lord decides? He decides based on our action. No, not to blame the Lord. Lord decides based on our action. Just like a judge in the court. The judge in the court is deciding not by the judge's own will or wish. Judge is deciding based on the, the actions committed by the people. But judge will be deciding as per the law. Like that God is deciding. But God is deciding on what basis? On our action. So he is the sanctioner. The prakriti, the material nature is a facilitator. Jiva, what we do then? We only desire. I desire to lift my hand. To who should give this? Prakriti has to give me the energy to give. If I am paralyzed, I cannot. Do I want to lift my hand? I cannot lift my hand. People in coma, they also want to speak, but they cannot speak. They have not been sanctioned. It's very important to know. So the knowledge of the three doers like this. The super soul, the God is a sanctioner. And the jiva is only desires, atman, we only desire. So what should we desire then? Our desire should be to serve God. And the rest of the things are sanctioned by the Lord and facilitated by Prakriti. <coughs> So that is only explained in elaborate in the 13, 14, and 15, and 16. Okay. The <clears throat> living entity is completely dependent on the dependent in his distress and happiness. By the will of the Supreme, he can go to the heaven or hell as a cloud is driven by the air. As again I said, remember the example of judge in the court. Judge in the court may Compensate somebody, okay, some compensation somebody because you have been wrongly convicted. Or another person, the judge may tell he should be given, he'd be fined. Why? Because he has done the mistake. Now, judge is neither partial or impartial. The judge is not partial. The judge is impartial. Based on action, the judge is avoiding. So, this is uh, so one can go to the hell. If one is dependent, living entity is completely dependent on us, distress and happiness. The will of the Lord, the will means his judgment. Okay. These are the some examples how we are depending on <coughs> Lord's mercy. We should not have ego. I am doing, I am great, I am intelligent, like this. Okay, Because that is the cause of our unhappiness also, many times. I think I am great and somebody feels, tells something, I feel get insulted. But the reality we should know, uh, this is an example. Uh, there was a great boxer called Muhammad Ali. Uh, and uh, nobody could defeat him. Successfully always he used to win the gold medal in the boxing. Then he declared one day to the entire world, I am the greatest, is there is any man in this world to face me? 
he declared a challenge to the entire world with all of ego and pride but in the old age after some years he got parkinson's disease he is not able to lift one glass of water or cup of coffee where the where is his pride where is his ego i am great man i am this and that whole world is there is any man to face me where you cannot lift one cup of co- coffee what happened so lord did not sanction prakriti did not facilitate and his all ego has crashed this is the experience which we all are going through if you are not going through we will go through old age is that only old age will crush your crush your ego if you keep our ego old age will crush our ego that is a fact so very much uh, one should be that's why you know spiritual they'll be happy in all the stages because their happiness is not dependent on material things if you depend your happiness on the material things you are sure to meet unhappiness in your life if your happiness is based on bhagavad gita that happiness nobody can take away even in the death bed you will be smiling that's what krishna said in the second chapter end of the second chapter even in the time of death is very peaceful those who are advanced so very simple to understand after passing through many many births one when one perfect knowledge and surrenders unto krishna then everything is revealed to him okay the last verse of this section is 16th verse when however one is enlightened with the knowledge by which new science is destroyed then his knowledge reveals everything as the sun lights up everything in the daytime this is called jnana now whatever we are discussing from last half an hour or 45 minutes this is called jnana knowledge why the knowledge the as per bhagavad gita the real knowledge is to how to escape from the suffering of this world that is called jnana no other jnana is going to help us suppose you are drowning in a ocean you are seeking help 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 somebody comes and tells you know i will tell you pythagoras theory now i'll tell you the, the you no know, mathematics formula i'll tell you, you know how the gravitation force works that's so you are thinking i'll explain that it is how it works gravitation force he'll say get lost first you say to me i want to know the knowledge of how to come out of the suffering knowledge he needs is that wait for two minutes somehow we're going to drop your rope hold it on the two hands we will lift you up that instruction to es- came from the suffering is called real knowledge which he needs at that point in time so this is called real knowledge how to escape from the suffering of this world that knowledge is called knowledge all other things are useless our our uh, uh, no material knowledge is not going to help us at the time of death <coughs> this section is over of uh, no doing the work with the non doership not feeling i am doing the things lord is doing everything therefore i surrender everything to the lord and take only what god gives me so that is advanced karma yoga or karma yoga action in krishna consciousness the last section <clears throat> where krishna going to talk about how to get moksha by so focusing on supreme lord because ultimately goal is to get moksha get liberated from this material world goal of human form of life is to get liberated from the suffering because we are meant to be happy if you are not happy then you should know how to get that happiness you know simple way the spirituality is nothing but it is meant for giving you happiness what kind of happiness everlasting happiness that happiness nobody can take from you that kind of happiness so now liberation that kind of 
know, spiritual advanced stage liberation by focusing on the supreme one should focus on the supreme while doing his activities is the summary of this chapter okay. what what one should be in what consciousness he should be there while doing hmm? you should focus on god while doing your activity hmm? always thinking of krishna while doing your activity focusing on god very uh, an example i will give you <clears throat> if mother is cooking the food which is liked by you or your mother you are cooking for your children which is liked by your children what is the predominant thought in mother's mind oh uh, no my son or daughter will come have this and no he will like it or she will like it oh she she doesn't want to too much of salt and reduce little bit uh, oh she does not like this i not add this vegetable she does not like tomato i not add that what is constantly going on is a thought of the mother is thinking of child while doing her duty of cooking now while doing the as a advanced karma yogi while doing his duty what should be his mind focusing on the god i'm doing it for the lord lord will be happy by the me doing this so with this example is very easy to understand isn't it it is possible to think of a child and also focus on cooking possible so that is what krishna is saying that focusing on the supreme when one's intelligence mind faith and refuge are all fixed in the supreme then one becomes fully cleansed of misgivings through the complete knowledge and thus proceed straight on the path of liberation now the point is when we are able to think of krishna like this just like i am able to think of my child when i am able to think of krishna like this when did i become eligible to think of my child always while cooking when as soon as i developed love if the mother loves the child only mother can think of the child so how can i think of krishna always for that i should develop love for krishna krishna prema love for krishna there is a way how to develop that then thinking of krishna is very natural to me no need to force i'll be keep doing my duty my activity so that i always think of krishna because i love lord i like lord so <clears throat> that is why said lord becomes fixed in the supreme he is able to think of lord then he is completely he is on the path of the liberation next verse we will read <clears throat> please repeat vidya vinaya sampanne vidya vinaya sampanne vidya vinaya sampanne brahmane gavihastini shuni chaiva shapake cha पंडिता समदर्शिन सो दिस पर्सन हू हेज डेवलप्ड दिस कैंड ऑफ थिंकिंग ऑफ सुप्रीम ओके हाउ डज ही सी ही सीज बाय द वर्च्यू ऑफ ट्रू नॉलेज व्हाट ज्ञान आई टोल्ड यू दिस का ट्रू नॉलेज हाउ टू गेट लिबरेटेड फ्रॉम द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड विद द नॉलेज ही सीज इक्वल विजन विद्या विनय संपन्ने दो सो एक्चुअल द विद्या विनय विल आल्सो कम हंबलनेस आल्सो विल कम द एजुकेशन शुड लीड वन टू ह्यूमिलिटी नॉट दैट एरोगेंस द एजुकेशन शुड टेक वन पर टू ह्यूमिलिटी बिकॉज़ एजुकेशन विल गिव अस द आईडिया व्हाट इज माय पोजीशन देन द ह्यूमिलिटी विल कम इफ आई डोंट नो हु एम आई humility is very difficult to get like sometimes some people are very arrogant because they don't know who are they when they come to some suffering and they need help from others that time humility will come. and it will come karma will not leave anybody 
that situation will come for everybody's life you know in the in the astrology there is a called sade sati the shani okay shani is called planet of justice when the shani comes to your particular time that time shani delivers justice for all the sins which i have committed i have to suffer so shani will reduce all those burden of sins it is said those who are arrogant will undergo a lot of suffering during this time but those who are humble they will be saved so vidya vinaya sampanni those who have vidya they will get vinaya and how do they look at everybody they look at everybody samadarshinah equal vision when they say everybody they give the bakrishna also gave two examples a brahmana a cow an elephant a dog or dog eater somebody eats the dog he is considered to be very lower species because such a lowest person he is for his taste of tongue he kills dog and eats shapa kecha shapa ke means one who eats the dog so those advanced in knowledge will see brahmana an elephant a dog a dog eater a cow everything in equal vision he does not discriminate that means in what is he focusing on he is focusing on the supreme seated in their heart as paramatma he is not seeing the bodily features he is not seeing the bodily abilities he is seeing the paramatma in their heart that's why this picture very nicely it is represented in the picture it is shown paramatma residing in the heart of dog heart of elephant heart of a brahmana heart of a cow so he sees everybody equally so that means he is focusing on the supreme he does not discriminate those whose minds are established in sameness sameness and equanimity have already conquered the conditions of birth and death their flawless like brahman thus they are already situated in brahman a person who neither rejoices upon achieving something pleasant nor laments upon obtaining something unpleasant who is self intelligent who is unbewildered who knows the science of god is already situated in transcendence means at the highest platform of spirituality so here is a shloka further explains such a liberated person is not attracted to the material sense pleasure but is always in trance enjoying the pleasure within is the way the self realized person enjoys the unlimited happiness and for he concentrates on the supreme this is very important verse let us chant this 22nd verse ye hi samsarsh samsparsha jabhoga दुखयोनय एवते आद्यंतवंत कौंतेय नूरमते बुध एन इंटेलिजेंट पर्सन डज नॉट टेक पार्ट इन द सोर्सेस ऑफ मिजरी विच आर ड्यू टू इन कॉन्टैक्ट विद द मेटीरियल सेंसेस O son of Kunti, such pleasure have a beginning and an end. So the wise man does not delight in them. All the enjoyment which we can take through our senses, through tongue, through nose, through ears, through skin, through eyes, all our senses and bodily pleasures, it has a beginning and it also has an end. The example I will give you. Suppose, <clears throat> let me take one very favorite. food of you let me take example as a gulab jamun imagine you like gulab jamun 
I call you over here, I offer you one gulab jamun. You are very happy, you are enjoying the gulab jamun. But I say take one more, and one more as you are liking. Your happiness has begun now. I give one more, one more you take. I take the fourth one, I say no, no, no. No, I first say you must take. Fifth one, sixth one, seventh one. Then I give tenth one. Now, same source of happiness has become same gulab jamun which was giving you happiness when it's coming in front of you you are happy now when it comes in front of you hey, no, 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 no. it's like a ball of fire which is coming near you so the happiness which we derive from the bodily pleasures has the beginning as also has end so the intelligent person will not go behind this kind of happiness is what Krishna is saying. Ehi samsparsha jha bhoga. Samsparsha jha means by the touch of the senses. So then what one should do? Before giving up this material present body, if one is able to tolerate the urges of the material senses, check the force of desire and anger Kama and Krodha, desire and anger means. He is well situated and is happy in this world. Very contradicting to the material understanding, isn't it? Those who not come to Bhagavad Gita class, they will not accept this. They will say, what is this? The enjoyment and all you cut down and say he is happy in this world. One is able to control his senses. One is away from Kama and Krodha. He is well situated and is happy in this world. Is a real happy. So, very interesting. One whose happiness is within, who is active and rejoices within, and whose aim is inward, is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in the supreme, and ultimately he attains the supreme. Here, within means what? Once he is within Paramatma, the Lord within. So, he sees that. He can sit silently at any place and enjoy the activities of life from within. So he can experience the presence of Krishna in the heart. Those who are beyond the dualities that arise from doubt, whose minds are engaged within, who are always busy working for the welfare of all living beings, who are free from all sins, achieve liberation in the Supreme. They will get Krishna in their life, Supreme. <coughs> The tortoise, the works number 26. Those who are free from anger and all material desires, verse number 26, who are self realized, self disciplined, constantly endeavoring for perfection, are assured of liberation in the supreme in very near future. The tortoise brings up its offspring simply by meditation. It is said like that. Shutting out all external sense of See this section you see in your handout. This section is called Liberation Moksha by focusing on the Supreme. So when you focus on the Supreme, you should keep your interest aside. When the mother is cooking for the child, and the mother should keep her interest aside. She, she, she will think of her child only. Though I like more salt, but I will not add more salt because child likes less salt. So mother is focused on the child. So the natural uh, outcome of focusing on the supreme is that I am not focusing on the my material enjoyment and material requirement. Is this clear? So shutting out all external sense object, keeping the eye and eyes and vision concentrated between the two eyebrows, suspending the inwards and outwards breaths within the nostrils, thus controlling the mind, senses and intelligence, the transcendentalist aiming at liberation because free from desire, fear and anger, one is always in the state of certainly liberated. 
the last words of this what do we get <coughs> by achieving this kind of perfection what is perfection focusing on the supreme doing my service to krishna without being attached controlling my senses this is advanced karma yoga that's what we are discussing please repeat bhoktaram yajna tapasam सर्वोकमहेश्वरम सुहृद सर्वूता शांति मृछती सो वेरी नाइसली कृष्ण कंक्लूड्स द लास्ट वर्स ऑफ दिस चैप्टर ए पर्सन इन फुल कॉन्शियस ऑफ मी मी मीन्स कृष्ण Knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, all yajnas, all austerities, all upavasas, all that you are doing, who is the ultimate beneficiary of that is God, Krishna. Bhoktaram yajna tapasam, all the yajna and tapasu, Krishna is the bhoktara, he is the enjoyer of that. Okay. <clears throat> those who have this consciousness the supreme lord of all planets and demigods and what is his position he is a sarvaloka maheshwaram krishna is the controller ishwara means controller maheshwara means supreme controller sarvaloka means all the planets sarvaloka maheshwaram sarvam sarvabhutana and what kind of personality krishna is He is Sridham Sarvabhutana. He is a benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities. All of us. He is the real well-wisher of all of us. Sridham Sarvabhutana. Bhyatva Maam Shanti Mrachati. So one who understands this, one who knows this, attains the peace, Shanti, peace, from the pangs of material miseries. All the miseries of our life will get vanquished when we get this knowledge krishna and his position and our position with this we come to the end of this chapter now uh, interestingly when uh, in the last section of this chapter when krishna is talking about controlling the senses krishna has mentioned about ashtanga yoga one has to control his senses by some yoga process therefore in the next chapter krishna will explain in detail about <clears throat> ashtanga yoga system so next chapter is called sankhya yoga or ashtanga yoga in the next chapter which we will be understanding so where we will understand oh, how yogis control their senses practically how should they sit how should they breathe what should they do all those details of how the yogis control their senses concluding the sixth chapter with who is the best yogi who is the highest of all the yogis yogi ram api sarvesha among all the yogis who is the highest of yogi so that is the next chapter with that will be with the next chapter we will be concluding the first section of bhagavad gita first six chapters next six chapters of bhagavad gita will be in depth on developing devotion to krishna bhakti yoga in the last six six, six chapters will explain for us as practically now what is our situation where am i what is my situation how can i come out from the bondage hmm? so this is uh, the process this is the whole bhagavad gita chapter and it is just like this if you are imprisoned in a jail and the first six chapters explain different ways to come out of jail second six second section of six chapters will explain what will you get if you come out of the jail 
and the last six sections will explain now for you where, what crime you have done what kind of complications you have and how to come out for yourself so your particular situation so it is just very uh, uh, rough exa example I gave so now we completed the fifth chapter so next class we will be discussing about Sankhya Yoga Rashtam Yoga so we will see in the next session with this you have come to the end of today's class